this video, I'm going to look at what the research says about running after you've had a knee replacement. And with regards to that, we're going to look at, first of all, is it possible to run with a replaced knee? Second, are you looking for trouble? Is it actually going to wear your joint out more quickly if you run? And then lastly, I'll also look at how you can increase your chances of being able to run after you had a knee replacement. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareika. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. Have a look at the description of this video if you want a link to our website. What does the research say about running after you've had a knee replacement? Well, let's first look at, is it possible to run after a knee replace, replacement? Yes, it is. So there's a very interesting study where they looked at ultra marathon runners. Um, it was the Ultra Trail du Mont Blanc race in France. Now this race varies between, uh, let me just get it right, 50 kilo 55 kilometers and 300 kilometers each of these um, sections of the race. And what they wanted to see was if there were runners who were taking part with replaced joints, so they looked at hip and knee replacements, and they also wanted to see if these guys took part, was the dropout rate that they can't complete the race higher for these guys or these people compared to the runners who didn't have joint replacements. Now for knees, there were only four runners over a period between 2015 and 17 that took part in this, that had knee replacements. But three of them actually completed all the races. There was only one that dropped out, which gives us 25% dropout race. Right. Now this actually compares really well with the regular guy, people who didn't have um, knee replacements, which had a dropout rate of 19.6%. Now, I will grant this, four runners is a very small sample size. So it may mean that if we had more runners with knee replacements, we may, may have seen a higher dropout rate, but we could also have seen a lower dropout rate. The point to take from this is that it is possible to run an ultra marathon race without any trouble if you've had a knee replacement. Because the other interesting thing is that the guys who had knee replacements didn't report any adverse symptoms from their knee replacement, either during training or during the race or after the race. Whereas several of the runners who had hip replacements did actually complain of symptoms in their hip replacement, especially during the races and after it. Um, so there may be a difference between hip and knee replacements and how well they tolerate running. Then there's another study where it's a review of 19 different articles that looked at physical activity um, after you've had a knee replacement. And what they found was that in this big cohort of um, people, it was over 4,000 um, knee replacements they looked at, there were 135, 131 runners. Now out of this group, only 23 went back to running. The part that they don't tell us in this study is why did only 23 go back? They don't tell us whether it was that they couldn't go back or that they just didn't want to go back because it may be that they were worried that they were told they would wear their joint out so they thought now I'd rather cycle or something. So all this research tells us if we take it in combination is that yes it is possible to run after a knee replacement but we don't know why so many people don't go back to it and we don't know if it's safe. So then that brings us to the second question. Will you wear your replaced knee joint out more quickly if you do run versus if you don't run? So surprisingly, I thought the research would say yes, because all my physio career, I've been told that high impact activities wear replaced joints out more quickly. But actually, the research is a bit lacking in this department. The expert opinion is that yes, high, act high impact activities may wear the joint out more quickly, but it also seems that expert opinion is starting to change. So this is interesting. So to look at this, I looked at, I took the research that we do have and I divided it into three sections. For the first section, we're looking at general physical activities. So not just high impact, but everything you do in a day. Secondly, we're going to look at high intensity activities like hit glasses, but this can be cycling or high impact. And then lastly, we'll look at high impact specifically. So if we look at people who do 
or people who are really active after they have a hip replacement versus ones who are quite sedentary and don't do much. There was a large review, and this review was in 2021, so it's really recent. Um, by the way, all the research articles is in the description of this video if you want to have a look at it, um, where they looked at physical activity in people. And they found mixed results. Some studies showed that the more physically active you are, the more likely you will be to need a, uh, another knee replacement more quickly. But then the opposite was also found in other studies, which showed that if you're sedentary, you're going to need a knee replacement more quickly than active people. So we can't make a judgment with regards to that at the moment. But what I will say on this topic is, remember why you're getting a knee replacement in the first place. It's because you want to be active. So what's the use of having a knee replaced and then just sitting on your bottom? And then secondly, if we think of all the benefits that physical activity holds for you with regards to cardiovascular health, your heart health, um, preventing diabetes or improving diabetes, um, several chronic conditions, mental health, then it's not really an option to be sedentary. If you want to have a long, healthy life, you have to be active after you have your knee replacement. Then, if we think about high intensity activity, now it's important to understand that high intensity doesn't mean high impact. It can be cycling hit classes or swimming hit classes, intervals, that type of thing as well. There's one research study that looked at this and they didn't divide it up into high impact, low impact hit classes or activities. But what they showed was that there's really no research to show that high intensity activity is bad for a replaced knee joint. Um, so it answers part of our question, but not really all of our question. All it means is that you can do high, high intensity activity without negatively affecting your joint, likely. It's only one study, so we need more research on that. Now we get to the section that we're actually interested in. Is there evidence that high impact activities like running will increase the wear on your joint and mean that you've got to have a replacement more quickly or early on? Now, there's a massive lack of research into this area with regards to knee replacements. There is a study that looked specifically at hip replacements. And what they found was that, yes, um, activities that load the joints more can actually increase the risk of earlier revision. Now, what they found with that was there's several factors that load the joint. It's not just the type of activity. So yes, type of activity plays a role, but also your body weight, um, the control you have or your technique while you're doing the activity. And what they found is that novice runners, so if you've not run before and you take up running, you actually load your joints more than somebody who's experienced, who's already got their running style down to a T. And there was strong evidence that if you have poorer motor control, that's how well, sorry, you control your body when you move, that loads the joint more. So it's not just as simple as what activity you're doing, it's also the other factors around that that can load the joint more. But now we know from the Mont Blanc ultra race study that runners with replaced hips and runners with replaced knees seem to fare differently during endurance events and that knees and hips may not be comparable. So this study's results may not actually apply to knee joints that's been replaced. So the only other study on this subject is one where they looked at what is the expert opinion and they looked at 150 um, surgeons who specialize in knee replacements and asked them about what activities they advise patients is safe to return to at what interval or point after surgery. And interestingly enough, 68% um, of the experts agreed that people could go safely back to running or jogging after six months. Now, to be specific with this, 60% said they could jog on a road after six months, 54% said they could run on a treadmill, and 51% said they could do any type of running. Now, they didn't tell us what they see as the difference between jogging and running, because to me there's not that much difference, but I'm going to assume that jogging is slow running, and that running, they meant high intensity running. Um, so yes, that's interesting. That's definitely new because when I first studied, um, expert opinion from knee replacement surgeons was stay away from high impact activities if you want to make your joints last. 
So it seems that actually that is now changing. Now, um, for context here, it's not that these experts felt you could go back to any high impact sports. Squash, for instance, they all agreed that it was a bad idea to ever play squash after you have a knee replacement. Um, and that's just because that is really high force, really stop start. So the fact that they feel running is safe means that they have actually thought about this and have experience in this. How can you increase your chances of running after you've had a knee replacement? Now, the research shows that you are more likely to, to go back to running after your knee replacement if you remain active up until when you have your knee replacement. Of course, you won't be able to run necessarily before you have your knee replacement, but being active means things like swimming, cycling, just doing strength training. And there's a few reasons why this can help. One is that you're in the habit of exercise then, so it's easier to go back to it. Second, if you stay active, you keep your muscles strong and you will have better circulation, more little blood vessels, and all of that helps with healing. So it may be that your results actually turns out better. So try to stay active, do whatever you can, even if it feels like nearly nothing compared to what you used to do. Just try as be as active as you can. Then second is don't rush back into running. Remember, although the experts are agreeing, well, 60% of them agree that you can go back to running, it's only after six months. And the reason for this is one, your bones have to heal. So there where that orthosis has gone in, the bone has to settle down and become strong again. And that takes a very long time. So that's part of the reason why six months is a good time. Then also, you need time to build your strength and endurance in your muscles because your joint is new, but the muscles aren't strong necessarily. And when you run, it's not just your joint that needs to take all the strain. Your muscles have to absorb large amounts of it. And the weaker your muscles, the more strain the joint will take. And remember earlier on, we also spoke about some of the research for knee re uh, hip replacements, showing that you load your joints more if you have poor running technique. And making sure that you've got good control with your exercises will help with that as well. Then thirdly, it's kind of hand in hand with that, build your base. You have to have really good muscle strength, really good control to ensure that your knee joint takes as little force as possible while you're running. So really put the effort in and don't just do the simple exercises that you're being given in hospital, but build it up to where you can do the things you need to be doing to be able to run. And a physiotherapist can help you assess that and figure that out. Then fourth is you may have to adapt your training plan compared to what you were used to doing. So often less is more, that you allow for more recovery between run sessions, that you don't do just like junk miles just because you want to be running, that you do really targeted sessions. So um, fewer running sessions, but working around the goal that you want to achieve with them. And these days there are more and more training plans that's coming out like that, even for people without knee replacements, because what they figured out now is like even for marathon training, where it was always about the volume you could train, now people understand that no, that doesn't suit everybody's body. You have to go according to what the body wants. And people are training as little as two to three times a week and still managing to run marathons at decent paces. So you may have to reassess your goals and your running volumes if you've had a knee replacement. Be guided by what your knee is telling you and go as slowly as you have to, to get yourself back. And then lastly, it's all about minimizing the load on that joint, especially if you want it to last as long as possible. And there are several things you can do. So we've already spoken about strength training and control training, but then also thinking about your training plan, not pushing far into exhaustion when you're running, because then you lose your form, so the joints will load more. Um, running to rain, so running really steep downhills or long downhills, places a lot more force onto the joints, as well as very uneven terrain or cambers. Um, so it may be about choosing your terrain properly and perhaps running on softer surfaces rather than road the whole time. But also running shoes are really important for that. So hokas are brilliant at 
providing shock absorption because they've got these thick soles, but stability. They're a really good combination of those two things because previously we would get um, cushioned shoes, but they would be really unstable. So look at what may be the best running shoe to provide the cushion you need. What am I leaving out? Um, yes, and then an important one is to keep your weight within a healthy weight. Now, you've got to be mindful that if you don't take in enough calories or you, you diet quite fiercely over a long period of time, you may end up actually causing your bones to be weaker because you don't have enough energy to rebuild them after each training session. So it's not about severely limiting your diet, but it's about just maintaining a healthy diet. So eating um, all the calories you need to replace what you burn when you train, but trying not to overeat, trying not to be heavier than what you should be. Uh, what am I leaving out? So to summarize, um, ah, actually there's a last important one. If you've not run before you had your knee replacement, so in the years going up to it, you never really ran, you're new to running and you think, ah, now that I've had my knee replaced, I want to take up running. The research or the um, experts seem to suggest that that's not a great idea. And the reason for that is that somebody who doesn't have experience in running usually has a poorer technique than somebody who's experienced in running. And we know that with hips, at least, they've shown that the joints get loads, loads more if you don't have such good technique. So if you're new to running, you've never run before, it's not really a great idea to take up running after you've had a knee replacement. So to summarize, we've got stay active with any type of exercise that your knee will tolerate until you have your knee replacement. Then do not rush back into running too quickly. You need to wait at least six months for your bones and everything to settle. Strength train and work and control before you go back to running. And don't start running if you're new to it. And minimize the load on the joint through thinking about your running terrain your running distances, your training program, not increasing too quickly, the right shoes and keeping your weight down, but not dieting too severely because then you can affect your bone health. Excellent. Let me know if you've got any questions and remember if you need any help with a training plan or you want an assessment of an injury, you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call. The link to the website is in the description of this video. Take care.